critiques of that later. But uh, for now, just some of the basics. More, more broadly, uh, the structuring of your organization if you are working within an organization. So uh, this has been really powerful in the past around different free trade agreements. Um, thinking about how to really bring those divisions out and use them in different ways. So um, one of them is to build alliances with civil society, so activist groups in other countries and to support them in putting pressure on their governments not to sign on. Um, so uh, we also need to think about ways in which those disagreements will help to make the problems with the TPP more visible. So if you have governments around the world saying we're not going to sign because of X, Y, Z, that would be really helpful for our own activism. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. And that's it. And I don't know if we have time for questions. We do. We do. Thank you very much. So please thank you so much. We have 10 minutes for questions. Great. Yes. Um, I'll do one question. I've got $2 I'll set up on later. Um, just quickly, you, oh, sorry, I lost my, my apologies for the line. Sorry. Um, so you were saying right at the beginning to talk to all your friends and family about the TPPA. What I think is important, well, my question to you is, do you have any advice on how to make that cut through with all the noise everyone's doing at the moment, people are tuning out to everything? Any tips on how to make this one cut through over the other ones? Well, I think that there are two things that are useful. One is to know your audience. So, who, you know, it'll be different for different people. That issue of transparency and democracy, like there is this huge big agreement that Australia is about to sign on, we don't even know what's in it and it's going to have really big important consequences for our legislation, particularly in, you know, maybe they're interested in the environment, maybe they're interested in intellectual property or in access to affordable healthcare, you know, bring out those issues. So work to what you think they will be interested in and present it in an accessible way. And then secondly, to pair that with an action that you think is reasonable for them. So you might say, oh, I will, I will email you the choice petition and it would be really great if you could send that on to some friends. Or if they're the kind of person who will call a minister, great. If they're the kind of person who will hold a town hall meeting, getting everybody interested, great. You know? So th think about what they can actually do. So don't just tell them there's this big awful thing. Say there's this big awful thing and you can do X or Y or Z or all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think the TPP will be like affecting the university sector at all? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we are affected by intellectual property restrictions and by having to work in it will probably have some effects on fair dealing and that kind of thing. So, yes, probably. So why was academia not in that list of potential allies? Uh, I kind of touched on that, but I, yeah, I could have brought it out a little more. There are a lot of researchers who are working on this. There are a lot of articles on the conversation at the moment, and uh, we should be drawing on their analysis in our activism. Uh, definitely, there are a lot of people who are doing things around this. Hi. I've done activism before, but I was curious, do we have any information on how effective it is? Yeah. Well, this is a really... Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Pardon? Can you repeat the question? Uh, so the question was, um, how effective is activism? Uh, this is a really broad question. Uh, it depends on what you're working on. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. It depends on the political structure you're working within. On some issues, there's very little hope of achieving anything. It might be that on this issue, the Abu government is gonna sign it no matter what we do. But we might also be contributing to a better political environment for other action in the future by taking action on this and getting people to pay attention. Um, yeah, um, just one of the, so that question about, is activism effective? On a lot of, particularly on the intellectual property issues here, um, part of the reason why this is happening as a trade agreement is because activism is effective. Because a lot of this stuff, uh, these particularly bad ideas came up, uh, they, they started, they pushed them within the WTO, and then suddenly all the small uh, developing nations took over the WTO and said, stop using it to push your, uh, you know, stop pushing it a, a developed nation agenda. Um, 
the, the, to push your terrible ideas on us. Um, and WIPO, um, the same thing. And it happened, they tried pushing it at the like domestic level, in, particularly in the US with Sofa and Paper, and they got a lot of uh, pushback. So they went out and found the least democratic international process they could find and decided to push the agenda through that. Uh, that's why it's happening there, because activism has worked in other arenas. So we've got to push hard on this one because it is the least democratic process that pretty much ex international process that exists. Um, and uh, that's that's why it's happening there. So. Yeah, I'd like to follow on that point, and I'd like to say that activism is the only thing it's affected. You know, the very fact that we have a weekend is due to activism, the very fact that we get paid is due to activism, and the very fact that TPP exists at all is because of activism by certain vested interests who want to see things get through, right? It's just a, it's a very selective activism that wants to keep um, keep us out of the process at the moment. That's why, as David said, they're, they're keeping it as secret as, as possible. Um, my, uh, uh, look, if I could phrase some by <laughs> Is there a question? Inspired rant into a question. Uh -huh. um, the difficulty that we face is actually, I think in the immediate difficulty that we face is that we don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. So it's very hard to frame a campaign around that issue. And it, it, um, Well, I think that that's the thing that we should be framing the campaign around. We yeah. should be saying this is going to have huge consequences. We've seen other free trade agreements have huge consequences, and there's no democratic oversight. And most people in Australia seem to like democracy at least as a theoretical ideal. So that is a basis for the campaign. Um, sorry. Uh, did you have, okay. Um, you have um, asked, so I'm going to ask you first. If um, they've got the longest mark, they talk to the mic. Because oh, they yeah, sorry, them. I should repeat the questions as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, the, the kind of like anti-globalization movement came out of Seattle and now goes around the G20 and stuff like that, has kind of been accused before of being kind of protest tourism or just a kind of cultural kind of movement. Can you comment on how broadly the movement around the TPPA can be politicized in a way that means that what movement doesn't just dissipate once this particular issue kind of falls out of the boat? OK, so the question is how to build a sustainable movement around the TPP. Um, there are lots of little things you can do on smaller levels. So, for example, avoiding activist burnout, burnout trying to build sustainable organizations, um, trying to build frames that transfer, so trying to make it clear that there's not just this particular text with this particular treaty that is a problem, but a whole heap <laughs> broader issues that this is one manifestation of. Um, trying to support civil society in different countries as well, rather than assuming that we should be going to Malaysia or Japan or whatever and doing our activism there. We want to build strong communities in each place that are active around these issues. So lots of little things, it's a long conversation, but I think there are things that can be done. Uh, yeah? Lots of, lots of countries on your list have signed up. There must be a carrot that gets into the negotiating table. What is that carrot? Why are countries actually involved in this conversation? Uh, the idea of an increased flow of trade. So the countries that are involved in this currently are, make up a huge percentage of the world's total um, GDP. And the US, the US has been particularly instrumental in pushing it and saying, well, if you want access to our markets and preferential access to our markets, you're going to have to sign up to this. So that's it. Um, yeah. uh, did you have your hand up before, or have you...? I did. Okay. You wanna... I think the fact that it is secret, we should be taking, taking each pressure group that's out there, looking at their worst case view, and saying, these are all the things that will come out of this agreement. The fact they've kept it secret means we can apply anything to it, and we can make it appear as being the world's worst thing. We may be wrong, but because it's secret, They've either got to come out and make it verbal, or we get people involved. Yeah, that's a potential point as well, to say, worst case scenario, this might do this terrible thing. All of you will be on fire under the TPP, literally sure. on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Not no, that's normally 
Well, not that but, yeah, it's a good, it's a good point. Yeah. I mean, you brought out the really fracking say. one. The fracking one is a good one to get a good group on board. There's yeah. a whole lot of things that will get different groups on board. We could force yeah. people, the, the political side to react in that case. Yes. And yes. then we have something to work with. Yes. This conference uh, and the free software community are a great example of sustainable activism over 20 years. But my question to you is, the unions and the Greens and others will be funding their, their campaign. Is anyone in the IT space funding the campaign roles? That is an interesting point, and I don't know the answer to it, and I would be interested in it. I think we are. Oh, one more we can okay. take. Right. Um, one of the issues I think that comes up in activism a lot, and is potentially a problem for getting the critical mass from people who see themselves as being more mainstream rather than kind of fringy or radical, is that certain groups can sometimes um, kind of co-opt particular causes and kind of bend them to their own agenda. We see this a lot in the queer community where um, a lot of the activism, the argument is of course that it may not happen without some of these people pushing it, but when it does happen it often gets a lot of pushback from people in the community. Um, maybe some of the answers to this are on the, the um, beautiful revolution um, toolbox, but how do we go about treating that line where we're pushing an agenda that is seen as being radical by some without, I guess, getting the mainstream people that we really need behind us off the, offside and yet still be effective because obviously you can't just, you know, uh, play nice and ask people to give you things that's never actually worked. Um, yeah. Do you okay. have any thoughts about how, how that can be done? I mean, obviously it's difficult because everyone has a voice and they're entitled to it, but it can be strategically frustrating to see that come up. Okay, so the, the question is how do we effectively build activism and build alliances when people have a range of different perspectives from more radical to more mainstream ones? Um, and I'm maybe not the best person to ask about this because I tend to be more, well, I, I think the, those radical voices are incredibly important um, in most campaigns. But I think in most cases, if you're strategic and if different groups show respect for each other and if you think carefully about how to um, leave space for radical activism and how to ensure that that has space to be effective and at the same time that the campaigns can be broadly accessible so more people get involved and potentially more people get radicalized, um, then that is one way to do that. It depends on how to actually work that on particular campaigns and particular issues. But um, yeah, that again is another very long conversation. Thank you very much. Please thank Scott again.